Welcome to Match Pack, your guide to all the facts and figures ahead of the next round of Premier League fixtures. As we enter the final month of the campaign, Leicester have a seven-point cushion protecting their place in the top four. Victory at Southampton on Friday will be another huge step towards a Champions League return. Liverpool still aren't out of the race, but next travel to Old Trafford, a ground Jurgen Klopp has never won at in six attempts in all competitions. But we start with Manchester City, Wembley joy last Sunday, and if results go their way this weekend, a fifth Premier League title could be confirmed. We're moving into awards season, where you tend to find Manchester City on the podium. Last Sunday, they clinched their fourth consecutive EFL Cup and then won at PSG in the Champions League in the week. City could very soon have the whole kingdom. The way they've come back from the way Liverpool literally blasted them last season, I think they have to be commended. The mental strength, because that team works hard training and in games. And when you look at what they're achieving under that manager, where they are, what they're capable of maybe achieving this season, you have to have nothing but respect for that manager and that club and those players. There was an element of fortune to Kevin De Bruyne's equaliser on Wednesday, but you earn your luck. The Belgian playmaker has now scored six in his last nine matches, twice the amount than in his previous 28. I enjoy seeing Kevin De Bruyne play all the time because when he's playing, he's so fired up to do well. You can see it in him, he's angry if things go badly for him and everybody around him plays much better when he is playing. With Sergio Aguero departing the Etihad at the end of the season, how do Man City replace their king of goals? They've coped this campaign thanks to Ilkay Gundogan's fine contribution from midfield, but this is likely to be the first season Pep won't have a player reach 20 league goals since he arrived in Northwest England in 2016. I think that at some stage City have to address that. I don't know if they've got something in the pipeline, you'd like to think they have, but if there's a team that can get past it until they do get that player, then you probably think it's going to be Man City. It's Crystal Palace for City this weekend, so a side who are happy without the ball against one that rarely let it go. Ruben Diaz tends to start it all off from defence. He's made the most successful passes per game this season, but what else does he offer? He covers everybody, he's got the pace to play that high line. You can see him directing, telling people what to do, where to go. He gets in the box, he scores goals. We're talking about a 23-year-old with a future of immense capabilities. If, with what he's showing now, then you have to say that City are the foreseeable future are in very, very good hands. Wilfred Zaha fired Crystal Palace ahead at Leicester on Monday, but that lead was surrendered early in the second half. And Kelechi Iheanacho's 80th minute winner made it back-to-back -back defeats for Roy Hodgson's side. It also means the South Londoners have conceded their most goals per game in a season since their last promotion to the top flight in 2013-14. And with just a few games left, Hodgson will want a better finish than last term when Palace ended the season winless in eight with just a single point collected. They've had so many problems with their defensive line that, you know, it's going to cause them a problem. When you add to that injuries to key players in the forward positions, then it's going to cause you a problem. You know, he's going to have to refresh that squad. With a free-scoring Manchester City side in town, Crystal Palace will need to be resolute from the start on Saturday. But this season, the Eagles have conceded 11 goals in the first 15 minutes of matches, the most of any team in the Premier League. You're always worried in the first five, ten minutes of a game of conceding, especially if they've got dangerous players. You want to keep things tight, ease yourself into the game, because once that happens, and especially when you're playing against a team that can get ahead of steam scoring early, it's over, like a team like City. You don't want to be going behind against a team like City. Not many managers have a decent record against Guardiola and Hodgson is no exception. He did upset the Spaniard once before when his Palace team won at the Etihad in 2018, but it's hard to see beyond a win for the champions in waiting this weekend. There's nothing that I feel that Palace can do, and we've seen Palace beat them, of course, but in this current form, and the Premier League is very hard to, to pin down and say this will definitely happen, but if there's a team I had to say they're definitely going to win this week, it's probably City and the way they're playing. Rashford, 
Oh, it's a fine flying save from Melier. Stalemate at Ellen Road. A 7th 0-0 draw of the season for Manchester United. The most they've ever recorded in a Premier League campaign. Four of those have come against sides currently in the top six, including one in the reverse fixture against this weekend's opponents, Liverpool. Bruno Fernandes, Donny van der Beek, Edinson Cavani. Despite scoring in his three previous appearances, Edinson Cavani was kept on the bench against Leeds until the final five minutes. There will be temptation to give him a recall this weekend, given he has the best minutes per goal ratio in the league of any of his United teammates. I've not been surprised by the impact Cavani's had because I know in the right team, by getting the ball in the box and creating chances, he will finish. If he goes to a team that doesn't create chances, he has to create for himself, he won't score goals and he won't even be effective. And I think that's what Manchester United need because they've tried Rashford, they've tried Martial, and at times Greenwood, who's not ready for that role yet, and that's what they needed. And number nine in the box is going to score goals. In by Sadio Mane. Flicked away by Fernandez, hit by Salah and rifled into the roof. Nudge down for Willock! The Magpie steal again! Minute 96. Liverpool's woes of 2021 were summed up in the draw with Newcastle, failing to put their opponents away and conceding a sloppy equaliser. They've dropped 15 points from winning positions this season, already more than in both of their last two campaigns combined. All of Jurgen Klopp's first choice front four started against Newcastle, with Mohamed Salah scoring his 20th league goal of the season. He's the only one of the four to reach double figures. Diogo Jota has impressed despite missing much of the season through injury, but Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino's production has dropped off alarmingly. Whichever combination is selected on Sunday could be crucial. His tried and tested is Mane, Salah and Firmino. Firmino does a lot of the on-scene work and in big games he likes that front three. And it's a big game. Jota's done really well when he's come on, really well when he started. But I think that if you really want to go back to a big game like Manchester United, I still feel that he'll go with the, the, the favoured front three of Firmino, Mane and Salah. Alexander Arnold in there, and there's the goal that they were looking for. It's him again, Diogo Jota. Mason Greenwood rifles Manchester United to three certain points. It may well turn out that whoever isn't picked could prove more important than who is. Only United have had more goals scored by substitutes than Liverpool this season. And these two have the two top scoring individual subs too. Cavani and Jota both have four goals from the bench. Two players almost certain to start are two outstanding English fullbacks. Luke Shaw and Trent Alexander Arnold have been a constant attacking threat this season, both contributing five assists. Shaw has taken the mantle of the league's most creative defender with 66 chances created, while Alexander-Arnold has an extra goal to his name. James towards Rashford! There's nothing old Trafford loves more than that! Andrew Robertson, Firmino, Lallana! Liverpool embrace salvation at Old Trafford! Liverpool's last three visits to Old Trafford have followed a familiar pattern. Dominate the game, but fail to win. In fact, Klopp is yet to beat United away from home in six attempts. Could another failure here be the end of their Champions League hopes? I think it'll be a tight game. Um, I don't necessarily feel it's a game Liverpool need to be winning if they want to be in the top four. And I've looked at the fixture list, and if they get a point at Manchester United, or even if they lose, they can comfortably, in my opinion, if things go well, win the other games, and I think that'll be enough. But of course, it'll be a bonus if they can get something out of the Man United game. The team once again in the box seat for a fourth place finish at Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel guided his side to a crucial win over West Ham last time out. And next up, another capital clash with the side even closer to their home, fellow West Londoners Fulham. Scott Parker's men weren't in action last weekend and with those directly above them picking up points, their survival prospects look bleak. It's been a season of struggle. Only bottom side Sheffield United have spent less time leading than Fulham this term. And they're unlikely to receive much sympathy from Chelsea either as the Blues look to build on their efficient display last weekend. They got at West Ham down both sides and the only goal of the game was created from the left. 
by Ben Chilwell. Werner scores it. It's Chelsea who take the lead in this pivotal game. Like Chilwell, Anthony Robinson is a left-back who likes to get forward whenever possible. The Fulham man has actually provided more crosses from open play this season than his Chelsea counterpart, as well as winning 61% of his tackles. An away win looks unlikely on form and even less so based on history. Fulham have only ever beaten Chelsea once in the Premier League and that was at Craven Cost points. The last time Chelsea scored as many as three goals against Fulham, When Spurs get the ball forward this season, they don't mess around. They take only 11.1 touches in the opposition box per goal scored, the fewest by any Premier League team. Lamella. Kane. Beautifully finished again. Palace stretched and opened up. Sheffield United have relied heavily on David McGoldrick for goals this season. He scored 39% of theirs in the league, the highest proportion of any player for any team in the top flight. Opportunity here for Sheffield United. Osborne, that's a lovely ball in towards McGoldrick. Drops out to Brewster. McGoldrick again puts it in. Sheffield United's top scorer adds to his tally. The rivalry between West Brom and Wolves is fierce, and the most recent Black Country derby didn't disappoint. The Baggies' first win under Sam Allardyce came against Wolves back in January in a breathless encounter. The visitors' lead was wiped out, and Wolves went 2-1 up. But the Baggies bounced back with Shemi Ajayi's header, and just four minutes later, a second Matthias Pereira spot kick ensured the points and the bragging rights belonged to Allardyce and Albion. Their survival hopes are now slim, but Pereira certainly hasn't looked out of place on the main stage. He's been his side's brightest spark this term, creating over two chances per game, while his nine Premier League goals puts him at the top of the baggies' list of scorers. But a crushing late equaliser conceded at Aston Villa last time out saw West Brom drop more precious points. With time running out, Allardyce will no doubt dwell on how different it may have been had some of those ten draws been turned into victories. Wolves fans will take some pleasure in pushing their rivals closer to the drop too, and Adama Traore may be the one to deliver the damage. He's by far the league's best dribbler this term and has three goal involvements in his last four Premier League games. Now time for our quiz question. New Zealand international Chris Wood hit a hat-trick last weekend, but can you name the only other two Kiwis to score a goal in the Premier League? The answer's coming up later in the show. Swinger from War Prowse. Ings with a flick header and in off the post. Breaks for Bale, and that is absolutely magnificent. It's Son. That surely enough for three points. A 16th league defeat of the season for Southampton at Spurs. They're now closer to the relegation zone than the top half. It's been a sharp decline from the team who were top of the table on November the 7th. But since then, only bottom side Sheffield United have picked up fewer points. I think they lost to Danny Ings for a period of time. I think he's a talisman, you know, the best striker. Losing him was a huge void to fill. And maybe just a, a bit of a lack of confidence. They've been not immune to the COVID pandemic. They've lost a few players over the piece with that as well. But they're stable enough in the, in the Premier League. They've had a good run in the FA Cup. I expect them to finish the season strongly. At the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Danny Ings notched his 10th of the season. The England international is on course to become Saints' top scorer for a third straight campaign. But is it perhaps a lack of depth up top that's been costly for Ralph Hasenhutl? I think they'll need another one in there. I think they'll need one of uh, a quality close to Ings. You know, Jay Adams is a young player. He's done very well. He's not a prolific goal scorer, so he's a work in progress. But I think to augment, if he is going to play two strikers, then I think they need a you know a good backup there, which they haven't got at the minute. Palace have got a chance here. Slotted away by Zaha. And it's fired in by Castagna. And Inacho 
has found the back of the net. And what a vital goal it is. Leicester have already matched their points tally from last season. The only time they've amassed more Premier League points was in their historic 2015-16 campaign. The title's beyond them this time, but Champions League qualification is within their grasp. Brendan touched on at the end of last season that they didn't have the strength and depth to maintain the run to make the Champions League. I think he does have it this year and I think that's been proven. There's still a bit of football to go and they'll still have that shadow hanging over them from the remnants of last season and they'll be determined to, you know, put that right. Kelechi Iheanacho scored the winner for the Foxes against Crystal Palace. The Nigerian forward has now scored 12 goals in his last nine games across all competitions, taking the goal-scoring burden off club legend Jamie Vardy. It's been massive for them this season, you know, because Jamie can't go on forever. And it's, he's carried the club, you know, in the goal-scoring department for a long time. Iheanacho is what you call a, a late bloomer. You know, he does have good attributes, he has a bit of rawness about him as well. But all of a sudden, you know, he's found that confidence in that Ridge being a form, and I think that's been a, a huge shot in the arm for the Leicester squad. Tielemans. Addison getting goal side of Stevens and firing the ball in. Barnes can seal it here, picks his spot, 2-0 to Leicester. The Foxes strolled to victory at the King Power in the reverse meeting, which furthered their superior record in this fixture. Leicester have picked up 12 wins compared to Southampton's eight. And Saints' tendency to squander points from winning positions won't help their cause either. They've let more slip than any other team this term, while only Manchester United have gained more from losing positions than Leicester. So can Brendan Rodgers' side take all three on Friday? I think it'll be a narrow win for Leicester. I think Leicester have far more to play for now. I think Southampton are stuck in betwixt and between. They can't go down, they can't really make the top six. And I think the game means a lot more to Leicester with the, the run-in that they've got. So I, I would say Leicester by the old goal. The most frequently contested league fixture in English football history as two of the original league clubs meet for the 205th time. Carlo Ancelotti still holds hope that Everton can make the top four, while Aston Villa's early season flirtation with European football has subsided. However, after last season's close call with relegation, Dean Smith can be rightfully pleased with the comfort of mid-table. They even have a better goal difference than Everton despite being three places worse off in the table than the Toffees and spending less time ahead and more time behind in games this season overall. Everton secured their first double over Arsenal in the Premier League era last Friday, with the majority of their play and the decisive goal coming down the right-hand side. Now Richarlison, now he's got the better of Granny Xhaka, Calvert-Lewin making a darting near-post run. Oh, it's crept in, straight through the goalkeeper. The stakes are high, Everton mean business. Douglas Luiz has been outstanding at the base of Villa's midfield this season, even becoming a regular starter for Brazil of late. And is a crucial platform for his more attack-minded teammates, making on average more than six recoveries per game. Villa are ahead in Premier League history with 19 wins to Everton's 13. We have to go back to December 2008 for the last time they won at Goodison Park. It was a dramatic evening on Merseyside with Jolien Lescott and Ashley Young the stars. Lescott's second of the game in stoppage time against his future side looked to have snatched a point. But with only 30 seconds to go, Young scored his second to give Villa the victory. A devastating display from Chris Wood last weekend fired Burnley to the brink of survival. And his hat-trick against Wolves also lifted him above Ashley Barnes in the club's all-time Premier League scoring charts. McNeil swinging the corner in, and there it is, his hat-trick. Chris Wood's first in seven and a half years. Three points surely assured. Next for Sean Dyche's side, a West Ham who failed to score for the first time in five games last weekend. And that blank was after 11 goals in their previous four outings. The cutback has picked out Fredericks, who caught that pretty well. It was an important block. Here's Lingard. That was veering not too far away from Lingard. Lingard. 
Newcastle face Arsenal for the third time this season, hoping for their first win. The last meeting was a comfortable Gunners victory, thanks to a goal from Bakayo Saka and a Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang brace. The league defeat coming just nine days after they were knocked out of the FA Cup at the Emirates after extra time. Newcastle are no longer in immediate danger of relegation thanks to pulling out a run of home form at just the right time. They're unbeaten in five at St James's Park, only Manchester United have an active streak running longer. That run of form has been built on edging tight games. Seven of their last eight have been decided by no more than a single goal and they've yet to win any league game by more than two. Only twice in their 25 previous Premier League campaigns have they failed to get even a single victory by three or more goals. Scoring has also been a major issue for Arsenal. The 1-0 defeat to Everton last weekend was the 12th time they've drawn a blank this season, setting a new and unwanted club record for a 38-game season, even with five matches remaining. Hello, I'm Duncan Alexander from Opta Joe. With Newcastle hosting Arsenal this weekend, the only fixture in Premier League history to see a team come from four goals down to avoid defeat, I'm here to look at some of the numbers around the best... Hi. 2-0 is not a dangerous scoreline usually, but Norwich came from 2-0 down to win 4-2 at Arsenal on the opening day of the Premier League in 1992. They were the second team to do it as well when they won 3-2 at Stamford Bridge a month later. However, the Canaries are yet to do it since. If a two-goal lead is safe, then a three-goal lead is invariably watertight. The only teams to lose after leading by three goals are Derby, 4-3 to Leeds in 1997, West Ham, 4-3 to Wimbledon in 1998, eventually, ended 5-3 to the visitors. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the team to have come from two or more goals down to win most often in Premier League history are Manchester United. They've done it 12 times. And Manchester United from 2-0 down lead 3-2 here. Following them is Tottenham on eight. Chelsea, in contrast, actually have more Premier League titles with five than they do comeback wins from two or more goals down with four. And finally, to put Arsenal's blown lead at Newcastle back in 2011 into context. This day. Earlier, we asked you to name the only two New Zealanders other than Chris Wood to score a Premier League goal. And the answers are Ryan Nelson and Winston Reid. Nelson spent the majority of his career at Blackburn, where he managed three goals. Reid got two for West Ham, including the final goal ever scored at Upton Park. Brighton may be seven points above the bottom three, but have missed several chances to secure their top flight safety. They've won only two of their last 11 league games. Brighton on the attack. Four waiting for the cross. And they might get it now. Fine work, played in! And put over by Mope. Leeds, on the other hand, are bang in form looking to extend a six-game unbeaten streak. It's their best run in the Premier League since 2002. Alioski, Dallas is dashing through the middle here for Leeds. He wouldn't, would he? Stuart Dallas, that's astonishing! How have they gone and done that? Sometimes one goal is all you need. That was the case for Everton at the Emirates, the Blades against Brighton and Chelsea at London Stadium. Match week 34 begins on the south coast on Friday with the Foxes out to further prove their Champions League credentials. Chelsea can take another step towards a top four finish if they beat Fulham on Saturday. There are three Sunday games before Monday's Black Country derby at the Hawthorns and West Ham's crucial visit to Turf Moor. But this weekend, all eyes will be on City in the capital. Six points is all Pep Guardiola's team need to guarantee the Premier League title. If they win at Crystal Palace on Saturday, then the focus will shift to Old Trafford just over 24 hours later. A Liverpool victory over Manchester United would mathematically confirm Manchester City as the best in the land. How ironic it would be that the actions of the outgoing champions could be the reason to officially confirm the new Kings of England. From Danny Jameson and me, Chris Wise, it's goodbye. <laughs>